Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We are going to do a rehousing of a spider that I really do like. And this is the Ephibophus murinus, which is the skeleton leg tarantula. Now these are a, uh, a new world spider, but with a bit of an old world attitude. They really are quite a feisty spider. Now, um, generally, we would um, we would not class our spiders as aggressive in any way. They are defensive, and these guys show you defensiveness to its ultimate. They really are defensive, and um, they're more than willing to strike out. Now, one of the things that's um, unusual about these spiders, being a New World spider, they do possess urticating hairs but it's not from their abdomen. So they don't flick their abdomen to throw up all these hairs into the atmosphere to get into the predator's eyes or in their nose and things like that. These guys have them on their pedipalps. And what they do is they stridulate them with their clarissera and they flick them out. And so they're actually firing their urticating hairs from the front rather than from the back. So uh, something that's... Um, rather unusual with this particular spider. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it in here. Now, these are a terrestrial stroke semifossorial. Now we say semifossorial because they're not renowned for digging deep. They don't tend to go really, really deep. Now, um, where they come from, they come from South America, throughout Brazil, French Guiana, all through there, Suriname. Now, these spiders spend the vast majority of their time in quite damp conditions. So they're, um, they do like a high, high humidity. Now, um, temperature wise, they stay fairly constant, but they like it high again. So in here, they do really, really well. They like it in here. It's like 80 degrees in here, vast majority of the time. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix a bit of our normal potting compost in here. We're running a bit low, we're going to have to get some supplies. We're going to get a couple of them in there like that. We're going to add some beastie mix. Because again, this has got all the lovely leaf litter and bits and pieces in it. So we're going to mix this in. Now, one of the nice things about these spiders, they'll appreciate all of this, this leaf litter. They'll really appreciate this because what they do is the entrances to their burrows, they'll actually decorate with all of this stuff and they'll tie it all in and they'll make this really, really beautiful um, burrow. And it's gonna have all of this lovely stuff all on the outside. So we're going to put our, put our bit of stuff in there. We're going to take a bit of this out, put it up here. You don't need all of this in the front. Put that back like that. So we're literally just going to make a little hollow there, just to encourage our spider down into there. Hopefully she won't disappear in there immediately. And we're going to get a bit of moss. This could be a really, really simple enclosure. Oh, look at that. Made to measure. Perfect. That's good. That's good. And we get that in there like so. I'll throw a bit of this stuff about. Perhaps don't need quite so much. There we go. Get a little water bowl. Now, one of the things we will find is when this is all moved around and kicked about, again, we'll probably lose this water bowl. It will disappear. Right. Get a little bit of water in there. And we're going to put a little bit on top of our moss. Rehydrate it a little bit. Now, as we said, where these guys come from, they're, um, 
the temperature and the humidity stays relatively high all year round. So um, we're looking um, at keeping this really quite moist. Now we have an adult female that we've got set up, which is of a breeding age. She's ready to go. We've got this sub-adult female in here, and we've also got a sub-adult male. So um, all being well, by the time our male comes of age, our female is, is already ready. She's recently molted out, so we've got a good five, six months really of time to play around before we have to worry about not breeding her. Um, and we can regulate that with the food. And then with our female here, we're looking at growing this one on. So she's gonna be a little while before this one's ready. Although she's already hit maybe three inches or so. So another molt and she will be nearly, nearly mature enough to, um, to breed. Now these guys don't get massively big. They tend to get around about four inches or so, four and a half inches. A very, very large female would be six inches, um, but generally they're under that, four and a half to five inches. Now, our one here is hidden away underneath this piece of bark, which is basically the size of this tub. And what we're gonna to have to do now is try and get her in here. So what we're gonna do, remember these are very, very fast when they're young, and they're also very, very defensive. So we need to be careful. We've got our catch cup here. I'm gonna pop that in there like that. We've got our catch cup ready. We're gonna move this stuff out of the way. Remember, preparation is the key to success. So, it would be nice if we actually knew where she was. So we, we, we haven't got a clue, but we know she's in here somewhere. So I think, where are you? No, nope, we can't see anything at all. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna peel this back. We can try and take this out, but leave the log in place. We don't wanna lift the whole thing out. There we go. Now we've got a little bit more freedom. And because we're gonna tip her in this way, we need to be lifting it from the bottom here. If we lift it here, although we'll see her quicker, it might cause us problems. So we, we are gonna go with this. Watch your fingers. I can't actually get hold of this, this is awkward. Right, that's all fully webbed up. So we're gonna turn this round and we're gonna go this way. There she is. Right. Now basically what happened there was our piece of log broke. There you go, you can see now that defensive behavior. And as you can see there, she's keener to actually stand her ground than she is to run at the moment, but she's gone. There we go. She's put herself in there. And she's in a lovely view as well. I think we can actually get a really nice view of her. Not get any reflection from that. Now then, one of the other interesting facts with these spiders is look at the abdomen. Now, on many of our spiders, we are looking at getting our abdomen a similar sort of size to the carapace of our spider. Now with these guys, their abdomens are always smaller. They have quite a small abdomen in comparison to their actual body size. So we're looking at keeping that into a good shape as this one is here. You can see it's got a lovely oval shape to it and it's in really, really good condition. 
but it's quite a bit smaller than the carapace. That's not a problem with this particular species of spider. They do have a smaller abdomen. Now you can also see now where um, they get the name, the skeleton leg. This is their common name. And you can see it's from these creamy white flashes on the legs. And the legs are almost black. Absolutely impressive. Very, very stunning spider. Now, um, as we were saying about size, this girl here, she's around about three and a half inches, I would say. Maybe getting on for four inches in leg span. They don't get massively big. So um, she's going to, what will happen now, she'll get a little bit bigger in leg span, but she will actually bulk out and she will get much heavier legs and things like that. And this is how we can tell when they're starting to mature. This is a sub-adult female at the moment and um, she's got a little way to go. But what an absolutely stunning spider. Now, um, as you can see there, because she's not feeling threatened by what we're doing, she's actually settled down and she's just sat there. She is ready to take off at any time. It's, um, she's in that position where she can literally just flash off in a moment's, moment's notice. But we've not got that defensive, you know, that defensive up in the air stance, which these are famous for. And hopefully she will settle down. She will allow us to get a photograph and we can Quickly take a nice photograph of her. Hopefully. Not sure that actually works. Now maybe we can um, come in with a camera and we'll get some close-ups of her moving around and a bit of luck, she'll stay nice and calm for us. Now we've taken um, a little bit of footage here try and show the spider off a little bit more. Now unfortunately she didn't go on walkabout and um, as was quite common with nervous spiders or very defensive spiders, once they stop quite often or not they will actually just sit still and they don't move. They freeze and that's exactly what this young lady here done. You can see that lovely cream colour on the legs there. Gives them their name, the skeleton leg. Fantastic looking spider. As we were saying earlier on, she's got a little bit of bulking out to do. And you can clearly see the abdomen there, how it's quite long and elongated. We'll get a better look at that in a moment when we go from above. You can see that nice creamy carapace there as well. The black is almost like a velvet black on them legs. Absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, we're coming up from above now. And you can really see this spider in all its splendour. Amazing spiders. And it's incredible how we don't actually see more of them. They really are fantastic. This will be another cool reading project for the future. Very, very nice. Now in terms of food, we can, um, this girl here will take on a full grown adult male dubia, no problems at all. And we use the male dubias as our staple diet for many of our spiders, and they do really well on them. They'll also take on anything that's below that. So red runners, locusts maybe, if you like locusts. I'm not a fan of locusts, but they'll take on, they'll take a locust. Um, large crickets, anything like that. These guys will mop them up. But do be aware, don't let that abdomen get too big. Now in terms of humidity, we like to keep these high, as we said before. In the wild, they live in pretty much wet conditions most of the time, pretty much all of the time. So we're looking at a humidity up in around about the 80%. Now we can do that by soaking the soil here and letting it stay moist in the bottom. On the top, we can allow it to dry out. Um, they are really big webbers as well. So we should in time see a really nice entrance to this burrow when she starts to web it up. She'll settle down and web it up. All right, 
what we will do now is we will grow her on in this. The adult female that we got is in a 30 by 30, which is slightly bigger. And one of the reasons we go up a size for our larger female is because when we come to breed her, we want that little bit of space for the male. And that will give him a little bit more confidence and hopefully give us a better chance of taking our male out alive to go on and pair with another one. So um, pairing them in small enclosures can be done with some spiders, but we have to be a little bit careful. That being said, these guys, if given the room, you can cohabit these and they will do okay. As long as your male's got somewhere to hide, he needs somewhere to go, but he'll be fine. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That is an absolutely, truly beautiful spider. Um, and one that we don't really see much of on the channel, but I think we're gonna show a little bit more of her. They are really, really stunning spiders. Um, in terms of care, I would put these at an intermediate. They're not necessarily a beginner spider, but um, if you're reasonably confident, there's no reason why you, you can't just get on and look after these perfectly well. They are nice and easy. Right, well, that being said, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. And I'll see you soon, guys.